What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the More Life Podcast. Uh, this is a special and a different kind of episode, and we're going to be doing more of these. It's just me. There's no guests today. And I wanted to start doing more solo episodes so I can kind of talk more about what we do at my agency here at the podcast and some of my own thoughts. I love having guests. Um, having guests make things so much more interesting and we get to hear his previews. I'm, I love hearing people's stories. So but this week I want to talk specifically about um, productivity because it's something that I've had to learn my own downfalls and pitfalls and like what I'm not really good at. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, that I do better if you want to be in this industry where you work for yourself, you know, where you're an entrepreneur, it takes a lot of practice and it's not easy to just think about how to get things done. You actually have to do a lot of the work to make sure that uh, you're seeing the results that you want to do. So number one, if you have seen any of this stuff before, the More Life podcast stuff that I had, please like, subscribe, share this video, go to Apple Podcasts, leave a five-star review. We got all that stuff out of the way, but let's dive right in to productivity. And I'll talk a little bit first about why I seem to always be falling behind. This is, you know, a few years ago when I first started um, freelancing in 2017, I was working out of a cafe. I was trying my best to do work and kept getting distracted, not getting as much work as I could done get done. And I've always been an avid reader. I love productivity and business management. Um, so I was, we were re- in my previous job. We also had, you know, time that we would read together. And I feel like those practices that I was working when I was in a set structure, they never actually translated to when I was just doing my own work by myself. So the first and foremost thing that I think that I discovered about myself was the environment really mattered. The environment were, were, was really what enabled me to uh, do my best work. And when I was working for someone else at an organization, that, that environment is exactly what was able to help me um, stay on track and produce my best work. So working at a, ca- a cafe at Starbucks or Second Cup or whatever it is, wherever you're at, that may work for some people. I wasn't maximizing the time that I was there because I was always distracted by X, Y, and Z. People being there, the noise level, relationships and friends, your phone, all that type of stuff. So the first thing to any type of productivity is you have to limit those distractions and you have to set a routine. A routine is so important. Um, shout out to Atomic Habit. You know, uh, if, if you're into reading or, aud- or audibles type you know, learning, you should definitely take a listen to that because um, it just helps you think more clearly about what triggers you to make certain decisions, all these routines and habits. So number one, distraction and routine, those things are like paramount. It sets the stage for everything because it's so easy to be distracted by like this thing right here, a phone that can go off or even on your laptop when you're doing work, you have notifications, you want to check Facebook for one thing and you end up going there for something else. Um, So I started to make a few rules, you know, or trigger points that would help me remember what I wanted to get done. So I would eliminate distractions when I would go to a cafe. I would then put my phone in the backpack and just put it away. And I turned off all notifications on my watch. So nothing buzzed unless somebody was calling me and I would put my phone and do not disturb. So at least I would get that out of the way. And the routine portion of it was making sure that I was doing those same things every single time. Put the phone away when you're trying to do work. If you have it out and you see it, it's going to tempt you. (laughs) It's horrible, but that's exactly what it is. It's going to tempt you to actually engage with it. And we live in a world where there are uh, no boundaries anymore, where your workplace maybe messages you after the work hours and people who used to like all be in the cubicles working at office jobs talk also during the day, during work hours. So there's the personal life spilling into business time and there's the business work spilling into your personal life. And having those separations and limiting those distractions is very, very key. 
Now, as a self-employed person, now I have, an, I have a desk here at a co-working space that's mine. It's the same thing. I'm a part of, you know, a very busy group chat. You can, if you were to speak with any of them, you'd be like, yeah, Barb, is it in the chat during the day? Just because I have that freedom doesn't mean necessarily that it's the best thing for me to be doing is having my phone on and choosing to engage with my friends during work hours. Having those set boundaries are exactly the things that are going to allow you to get the meaningful work done. This is what I mean by meaningful work. I work in the creative space. I'm a designer. As a designer um, or any type of art, the longer you are entranced in the work in a single chunk of time, the deeper you get into that work. The deeper you get into that work, the more you start to understand where you are, what you're trying to do. So if you're coding or developing a website, if you're designing a brand or a logo, if you're an artist and you're painting, if you just try to like do like TikTok and just like, hey, I have three minutes while I'm waiting in line for something and you open up your sketch pad and try to draw, it's never going to be as good of your work as if you were doing uh, a long period of time in a sketch. So the reason why I would say like, you want to have distinct moments where you can get meaningful work. That's what I mean by meaningful, deep work. Deep work is like I have carved out time for me to do something that's really important and I have to limit my distractions because every single time I do that, um, I don't do that rather, I get pulled out of that world. That's it. I don't know how to explain it to people who aren't creative. The only way that I've ever talked to my wife about this was like, if, like studying. Imagine if you're studying and you're trying to learn a, a, a subject and you keep getting distracted by phone calls or kids bothering you or loud music somewhere else. It takes you out of that mode that you were in when you were trying to understand trigonometry or whatever. And that's where, as a creative, we have to be deep in the work for it to really sink in and for the meaningfulness to actually come out of us. So that's number one. Number one, distractions, routines, super huge. Once I learned that, that that really did help me um, restrict myself. I needed to have a little bit of restrictions that were going to help me not be um, as scattered all over the place. Okay, the next thing is batch work, okay? Batching your work, I think I learned this again at my previous job, um, a few years in, we were reading a book talking about putting all of the similar tasks together and how you then select certain days to do certain things so that you don't make it harder for your brain, but in fact, you help your brain compartmentalize all these different areas of your work. So for myself, you know, I run a marketing agency, I'm a designer, there are different aspects of my job. There's administrative work, there's the business marketing, the stuff we do to market the business. We also have um, our actual design, like our client work. We also, like for me anyways, I have the, the finances and, and meetings with the bookkeeper and paying our contractors and our employees. So all of those things take up a different part of my day. And if I were to try to do all of them sporadically all throughout any day, you're actually losing, you know, a certain amount of effectiveness or efficiency in your work. And I'm not, by no means am I a, uh, a, a productivity master, but I do understand that my brain power is a finite resource every day. There's only so much energy that I consume that produce, I guess, neurons that, that connects thoughts and ideas inside my brain that allows me to kind of create the work that I love to create. So if I'm always wasting energy trying to think about what I was doing before what I was currently doing, then I'm wasting that meaningful time that I could be like getting the real stuff done. So all of my meetings are on Thursdays. All of my follow-up or catch-up work is on Fridays. Monday is always my administrative um, business marketing day. So you can see how um, Tuesday is kind of like a in between. There are like in case somebody cannot make a meeting on a Thursday, they re they Thursdays just never work. Tuesday is like the backup that no, most people don't know about. That okay, I'll make an exception for you. We'll do it on Tuesday, and that's kind of how I I live my life. Once I found that routine for my company, 
that's when things started actually making sense. Because there's something that people don't really talk about when you start a business. It's that you get so f- fluttered with an ingest of ideas and thoughts and things you're trying to remember and all these different things. And there's no way to process them because a lot of times when you're starting a business, you're in the phase where you're almost there. You're not quite there. You can't quite afford a contractor. You can't quite, you know, have a bookkeeper yet. You can't quite have a VA or an assistant do some of this work for you yet. And so what ends up happening is like, you're like, oh, I got to figure this. I got to do this. I got to do all these different things. And then you end up not capitalizing on those moments because you're kind of wearing all the different hats throughout the company. So make sure that you're batching your work. Figure out in your schedule, when am I going to do each of these things? If you're making YouTube videos, I make YouTube videos on Fridays. If it's like we were talking with Jalen on episode one of season four of the podcast, he only does his videos on Sundays, all of his TikToks. That's you got to batch it all together at one time. So you get your distractions all out of the way. You then focus on these specific things on each individual day. That's number two. Number three, this is super important. How do you remember all the things? Where is the net? What is capturing all of these different things that you are running through your brains? And then after you have it written down, how do you remember to bring it up? How do you remember to set it aside? How do you remember to assign it to somebody? Um, remembering stuff, nobody's that smart. Uh, everybody needs project management. Everyone needs some type of administrative tool to kind of keep track of things. Some people might just want to use paper and pen. I got some right here, right? A little moleskin, a little good pen from Amazon, and that can do it for you. Um, I use a combination of two things, things that happen immediately in my brain that I need to jot down because I am not that smart to keep track of all of them. Um, I do have an active mind <laughs> if I write everything down inside my journal. The journal holds all the immediate thoughts and ideas. As uh, the day gets closer to the end, I take about 15 minutes and I write everything that I have inside of a tool. The tool I'm talking about is Asana. Um, I'm a huge fan of Asana. It runs my entire business. Um, I've just recently invested in my business by hiring a professional, um, an Asana solutions professional to actually come in and help reorganize and structure all of our efforts inside of Asana to make it so much clearer about how we communicate and how we execute our transformations. We call the work that we do transformation. So we transform your not having a site to having a site. We transform your bad logo into a good one, all those type of things. So all us executing transformation, it all happens because of Asana. When we onboard clients, when we onboard new um, contractors or vendors, All these things happen inside of Asana. When we track our projects, when we track our tasks within those projects, when we track who is associated with specific tasks and how they're going, it all happens in Asana. These key things, it seems so simple and so easy, they really do make a big difference. They make the difference in the sense that if I now don't have to worry about the status of something, I'm now free to operate in my space, clear conscience. The issue that I found myself in, I would say three years ago, when I first started freelancing, was that I was working under duress and I didn't even know it. I was working in a cafe while still stressing about, did I invoice this person? Do I need to follow up with this person? Has this person signed a contract yet? And also, I'm late on all my emails. I haven't done X, I haven't done Y, I haven't done Z. So this is where you need to be nice to your brain. You know, I consider myself to be somewhat of a smart person, um, but at the same time, if I'm always stressing out my brain's capacity Right. Because, again, like I said, it is a finite resource. You cannot stay awake forever and produce good work, which means there are peak times when you got to know yourself to be like, this is when I operate best. For me, it's mornings. I have to give up late nights because I know that I work really well in the morning, that I'm very motivated in the mornings. Um, You have to know that about yourself so that you're not working under stress and duress, you know, when you're your brain is so cluttered and flustered that you're actually not producing good work. You're just trying to get 
results, you know, gets means to an end. Let me just get this done. Yeah. And one of the things that's really important to us at our agency is that we never just want to treat our customers and their work like it's just a number. We genuinely care. That's why it's called Creative Partner. We partner with you to get stuff done. So me fixing my distractions and setting a routine, me setting up batch work and, you know, what days am I really, what, or even what days am I going to do certain work and even uh, what times during the day I'm going to do certain things. Like for me, I do all my emails first thing in the morning, no matter what time I get into work. Sometimes I get in really early at seven. Sometimes I get at 930. I got to bring my kids to my mom's or to school. So figuring that out is super important. You need to know when you're going to do those things. And then, and then lastly, I think there has to be a net. And it's paramount for a, a freelancer or an entrepreneur of any kind no matter how smart you are, you're not smart enough <laughs> to hold all of those things at the same time in your brain. Something will slip up. And this is where I'm going to end this before we end. Um, there is levels to this, and I'm learning this still as I'm going along. But one thing that I am learning is I can't go to the next stage until I complete this stage. For me to hire contractors and have vendors... For me to do meaningful work with really cool clients that I'm really proud of the work that we do, I have to be more organized. Otherwise, my reputation will be at stake. So if you're a young person starting out, this does not mean you need to have $25,000 um, you know, clients or it does not mean you need to have uh, the best productivity tools. There's tons of stuff that you can start to do. The best thing to do is probably take a, a, a beat and write everything down on a piece of paper, not on your phone. And from there, kind of bundle or match things that match together. And then create a schedule. You know, write it down, separate them or bundle them together, create a schedule. Your brain will be so much happier for it. It's like you've given it relief. You've allowed it space. It's as if you were able to allow it to breathe and to find space to do the work that you really want to do. Meaningful work does not mean that it's super like important in the sense that we're, we're solving world hunger. Meaningful work does is like you, your intentions match what your actual like productivity is. That's meaningful. I set out a goal to do this and I did a really good job at doing this. That's meaningful. And I know there are a lot of people who are growing in their business, or maybe it's a freelance or a hobby. The more you can solve that equation, how do I get to meaningful work um, and not like running around with a chicken with like a chicken with your head cut off? <laughs> That's going to make you feel better on the inside. It will allow your mind to actually be clear, and you'll start to see results and growth. Okay. Guys, this, this is uh, one of many things that we're going to be keep doing in the More Life podcast. If you made it this far, thanks. Um, we're also going to have uh, this come out early on Patreon. So if you're this is the first one for the Patreon, welcome Patreon folks. You're going to get this a week early. And we're also going to have a lot more of these where we talk a little bit more in depth about some of the things that I do to run my agency things that I've learned talking to other people that are in this industry and to things that we can work on together as a community. So let me know down below, what do you do to set your routine? What do you do to batch work? What do you use to hold all of your thoughts that you need to remember? I want to know. And maybe we can have a little bit more conversation about it. And uh, I know we probably have some early risers, some late people, all that kind of stuff. Let's talk about it, man. This has been the More Life Podcast. My name is Bart. Peace.